What advice would you give to young folks? What advice would I give? In high school and college that are um, thinking of how to make a, their way in this world. If you haven't already, can you can you define what you have an innate ability for and match that with what you're willing to hustle to get? Yeah. Sometimes we have an innate ability, but we don't want to work for it and we take it for granted. And we end up doing something that may work. I pay the bills. I get us by day to day. But we don't really like it. We have trouble finding a way to enjoy it. Definitely don't love it. And then sometimes we don't know what our innate ability is and we're hustling and working our tail off and breaking a sweat to do something that we really aren't that good at on an innate level. And that's a good challenge. And you can work and become good at something that you don't have an innate ability for. But if you can match those two, what do you have an innate ability to do? Because what we have an innate ability to do, when we do that well, we do kind of enjoy it. Yeah. And one of the things that requires is to kind of be really honest with yourself at what your innate ability is. Because oftentimes there's a lot of noise when you're growing up, people telling you what you're good at and not good at. Like really, you have to look at yourself, listen to yourself, that inner, like a deep, rigorous self-analysis of what am I actually good at? Yeah. Not what I hope to be good at, but what I'm actually good at. Right. And then if you look at that and you can define those two, hopefully there's a, you can you can activate it in a way where there's a demand for what you supply. <laughs> <laughs> You found love with Camila Alves McConaughey. Uh, what advice would you give to people on how to do just that? How to find love? Oh. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> uh, this wonderful subject's been discussed since the beginning of time, hasn't it? Love it. Um, so I can tell you what things I've kind of learned and I'm still learning. You know, love is one of those mystical successes. It doesn't make sense. It you know, when I was when I was before I met Camilla, I had had I was coming on to my late thirties. As much as I'm not a person that is guided by timelines. I was, my life had not really added up to what I thought it was going to be relationship-wise. I thought by that time I would have met the woman I loved, married, and started family. And that hadn't happened. And I did find myself doing that thing I was doing at the Amazon, looking around the corner. Mm -hmm. Any prospective possible female I met that I was attracted to, I was like, well, maybe this is the one. I make the joke, but it's true. It's like at every red light, I'm like checking out who's next to me in the produce section at the supermarket. I'm like, who's in the produce section? You know, it's like looking. Yeah. When you're in that zone, you can also be a little intrusive. You can trespass on people's, you can get outside of yourself. Mm -hmm. You can be overly impressed and not as involved and have your own constitution and sit back. And therefore, if you're outside of yourself, you're less attractive to your possible mate. I've got a series of dreams that I've written about, but I had one then that was very spiritual. That was me as a 88-year-old bachelor who never got married, and it was a beautiful dream. Where on paper, I thought that should be a nightmare. It wasn't. What that dream did for me was allow me to go, you may not find the woman for you and get married and have a life with her. That may not be. 
And for the first time in life, I was okay with that. Mm-hmm. Not more than intellectually, spiritually, I was grounded. I was like, okay. Then I'm moving through the world and on this particular night as myself, not intruding, I was inviting. I did see her move across the room and did not say, who is that? I said, what is that? (laughs) And then did move to call her across the room. So I did invite, but I was not outside of myself. And I was able to be myself with her, what my eyes saw everything that she turned out to be when the lens got zoomed in, more details got known and we began to talk and got more intimate and closer together and spend more time became true. And then some, but not every single thing that I imagined when I saw her move across the room turned out to be true. And then some in the, just the image. Um, we, found a, had a moral, similar moral bottom line about life, each other, how we treat ourselves, what we respect, what our own constitutions were. We had similar uh, um, perspectives on raising children, which was very important to me and her. And then we just enjoyed each other's company. Yeah. And we laughed together. And we support each other and we promoted more of each other and we lit each other's fire. Mm -hmm. And we, if one was rolling, we kept dishing. You go, go, go again. Take the next shot. More, 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 more. This was a biggie too. Getting excited for each other's success. Yes. Yes. To be able, I think it's very important. We all have jealousy. I get it. But it's very important to be able, if you can, be happy for your lover when they succeed or are succeeding or are across the room at the party laughing with a stranger, Mm -hmm. to be happy for them when it has nothing to do with you. She was, I would be away, she would the questions and the talks we would have, she was happy for me about how excited I was about my day and my day had nothing to do with her. Yeah, She wasn't there. And I found myself not telling myself to be happy for her, but being really, really happy for her when she would tell me about something that happened that day with her. And as much as I went through my head, oh, I'd have been great if I would have been there. Yeah. I was like, no, I don't want to trespass on that. That You had that yeah. independent of me. Bravo. That, that's a choice you make not to, not to give any time to the jealousy, to the very natural jealousy that we humans have. It sure doesn't have any, I don't see the residuals in in it. (laughs) True. I've got it. I've had it. And I have it. I just don't, you know, I I haven't seen where it has any payback. 